Why I just made you the co-host.
Let me turn the tap. Can you see my screen, Naomi? Yes, we can see it. Okay, good, 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 good. Uh, put that up a little bit. So it looks to me like Google servers are down on the whole East Coast, if I'm not mistaken. That's what it looks like to me. Google Drive is down in the Midwest too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna be using this. Let me just use this off of. Um, doo -doo. Let's see if I can just click through that. And so I'm going to have to alter a little bit, but we'll still we'll still get uh, the content uh, started. All right, I'm going to get started. Um, I uh, I guess I can't apologize for Google. So my presentation will be a little bit different, but the focus will be on uh, note taking. Um, I, I guess in the future, I will have to remember to download my Google slides as a um, as a PDF. My name is uh, Brian Friedlander. I'm an assistive technology consultant and also a professor of education at St. Elizabeth University in Morristown, New Jersey, where I teach undergrad and graduate courses in special ed and um, assistive technology. So it's kind of share with you some, um, some of the things and tools that I've been using uh, to support note taking um, in the classroom. So one of the, um, the conundrums with note taking, especially for students that we, we work with who may have attentional problems, learning uh, challenges, um, even uh, you know, students where maybe even you know, English is not their primary language, um, you know, so students who are uh, deaf or hard of hearing, is, is paying attention, which is critical to taking notes. Also, simultaneously um, processing um, the content and recording it in some way, and uh, that takes a lot of, a lot of skill, especially if students are trying to put it, um, you know, kind of synthesize the information. Certainly having good fine motor skills can play a really big part, um, you know, in that. Uh, a lot of students I work with are dysgraphic, have difficulty even reading their own handwriting, and so their notes are not very useful. And then also, the other part, the other part of note taking is how are the students organizing um, the the information. So those are certainly important facets to uh, note taking. So the the goals today are taking a look at uh, some tools that are easy to use and those that provide a safety net for um, students. A lot of the students that I work with, um, not only do they have difficulty, you know, taking notes, but a lot of them. You know, share with me that um, you know when they walk into classrooms where they know they need to take notes, uh, their their anxiety level is very high. So, you know, how can we provide some tools that kind of lower the anxiety so they can you know sit and understand uh, the information and also remove some of that um, cognitive um, load. So, um, I'm going to talk about some other other. Uh, uh, tools as well that I had intended to, but uh, I just want to talk a little bit about um, audio because it really can provide that safety net um, for students, especially those that um, want to go home and review what the teacher said in their own words. 
Um, in, in the case when they're using audio, they don't need to write everything down. Um, and a lot of the tools also allow students to do use um, words or just images or sketch notes um, where they can just draw, you know, icons, pictures, or if they're in classes like a biology class or an economic class, they can draw graphs and images and tie that into the audio. And it's because of the demands that students have, it's, you know, even if they were to digitally audio record everything, they just don't have enough time to listen to the whole lecture again. So they can use uh, some of these techniques to bookmark um, the audio so they can go back and review um, part of it. So just want to talk about some smart, some smart pens. Um, Probably uh, the one on the right, LiveScribe. Uh, many of you may be familiar with LiveScribe. Uh, they've been around um, the longest in the industry and they, they came up with a way that allows students to record you know, audio with what was written at that time in their notebook. All the smart pen technologies um, rely on having um, a built-in camera and having a microphone. We'll talk about the microphones in, in a little bit. The, the picture on the left is from a, a, comp, a new, relatively new company in the field called Neo Smart Pen. This is their Neo Dymo. This was just released a couple of months ago. It's an entry level smart pen that works with Neo Studio and can also record um, audio. Uh, the Neo Dymo has a battery um, it's a, I think it's a triple A or double A battery that keeps it charged um, for many hours. This pen doesn't have a, a, a large memory, um, but it basically uh, offloads everything to the uh, Neo Studio uh, application, which is pretty full featured, um, which, is, which is really nice. Both the Neo Dymo that's um, in the uh, slide here and the LiveScribe Symphony Pen, they both use Bluetooth and they offload both the speaker and the microphone to the smart device. So that would be, you know, an, uh, an Android phone or an iPhone using the app. So the, these take a little bit more um, time to configure when going into a classroom. Uh, in that the student needs to, um, in many cases, connect it to their, um, their, you know, their iPhone or Android phone, which, which means their phone needs to be out. So one of the, one of the models that I recommend for students, uh, which is a little bit older model, is the LiveScribe Echo. And it's the one that a lot of students, if they're going off to college, a lot of the uh, disability centers will uh, issue them a LiveScribe Echo pen. The reason being is that um, it is chunkier because the microphone and the speaker are built into the device. It also has an LED. Let me see, it looks like there's maybe a question. Yes, I'll, um, I'll take care. We'll take care of the logistics of getting you this PowerPoint. Um, but the, the LiveScribe Echo Pen um, is really nice for students um, in, in that it, uh, you basically, you can come into class, turn it on, you don't need to take your phone out. Um, it has a fair, in a fair amount of storage. You can buy this pen with different levels of, of storage capacity. The other thing too is this one uh, charges with a uh, micro USB cable and it also has a, um, uh, an RCA jack um, at the top of the pen so students can actually listen and review their notes with a wired uh, headset. In addition, the LiveScribe company makes something called 3D microphone which plugs into that port that um, provides tremendous noise canceling for students that may be in large lecture halls um, in, in a high school or a, a college. The LiveScribe Ager, um, relatively new pen, probably in the last two years. Uh, this is a very thin pen, kind of an entry level too, about $99. Um, this requires, all these pens require that you use the LiveScribe notebooks that come in different 
um, formats, um, and I'm sure students will find uh, a format that meets their needs. They're really not that much more ex expensive than you know any of the you know Mead notebooks or other notebooks students may be using in the classroom. But both the Ager and the LifeScribe Symphony, the Symphony is the latest one that just came out. Uh, requires that the student have their, you know, Android or iPhone out because it uses uh, Bluetooth um, for both the speaker and the microphone. So in that case, it would be important that the student, you know, sit close to the source of uh, instruction so that they can get a good audio recording. Uh, let me just... So the LiveScribe um, Smart Pen, it records the handwriting and audio, um, and it, it pretty much, it basically, you know, not to get confused, it do, it's not reading what you write. It's basically time stamping or bookmarking what you wrote with the audio of what was said at that time. It also allows students to um, create pen casts so that these are basically um, small videos where the students can actually see your handwriting. So teachers could use this as an instructional tool as well. So it allows students to play back uh, what they wrote and listen to it in real time. And you, there's also, um, the LiveScribe also has software that allows students to plug the devices into a Mac or a PC and back up um, the notes. I'm just going to go into, let's see if YouTube is, um, I don't know if YouTube, let's see if YouTube is up and running. Uh, let's see. It looks slow, but let me go to my channel. Just want to do a, a quick demo of the live scribe pen. What I'd like to do is show you how we can use the LiveScribe pen for note taking in the classroom. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn it on and you see it's starting up. To take notes, um, I'm just going to tap on the record button and I'm going to make believe I'm sitting in my science class and my teacher is asking me to uh, bring in um, some materials for a science experiment that we're going to be doing. So first thing I do is I click record. And now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to write a science experiment list. So the first thing I heard was I uh, need to um, bring in some salt. And then my teacher asked me to um, bring in uh, mineral water and also uh, bring in a, a plastic container. And the last thing was to uh, uh, bring in some straws, and these are straws that were uh, bendable. Once I'm finished taking the notes, I'm going to hit stop. Now, when I go home, if I want to listen to my notes again, I could just tap on the each one of these, and then you would hear the um, the audio note. some salt and then my teacher asked me to um, bring in uh, mineral water and also uh, bring in a, a plastic container and the last thing was to uh, uh, bring in some straws and these are straws that were uh, bendable. Once I'm finished taking the notes I'm going to hit so you can see that uh, the student can always go back and refer back to the audio note um, that was uh, recorded. In a couple of couple of seconds, uh, this information is going to be uh, synced to my Evernote account, where I can also view it and listen to it on uh, on the web.
So the question is writing on what? I'm writing on a, um, a live scribe notebook. Let me get out of this. Let me get out of that. So live scribe, if I go out to, um, if I go out to live scribe, you, you'll be able to um, go into their store and you can see that they have a lot of different um, notebooks. So here's a four pack single subject. There's three subject, um, there's journals. There's also a weekly planner if you if students want to use that for organizing. There's also um, sticky notes um, as uh, as well, which um, so you can see this students have a lot of different options uh, as far as the um, you know as far as the uh, types of paper uh, they can they can use. So uh, just a, a quick review, that was the Echo, um, has the microphone and speaker, um, the RCA jack, um, and you can also purchase 3D microphone for noise cancellation and for sound. And it also supports um, something, it doesn't look like LiveScribe is advertising it, um, it's called sound stickers. These are stickers that you could adhere to any worksheet or piece of paper uh, and then actually put audio notes on that piece of paper. So again, it could be an interesting support or scaffolding for students that are using the pen. So the, the, the newest pens, the Agar Symphony, a uh, very thin design, utilizes Bluetooth um, and it has desktop and software for Mac and Windows. So these are <coughs> the Neo um, smart pen models, uh, and uh, they, they differ in price um, depending upon how much memory they store. Uh, the least expensive is the Neo Dymo, um, and then the Neo Smart Pen N2 is probably the most expensive. I want to say about 150, 160, and the Neo Smart Pen M1 is somewhere about 100 and. Twenty-five dollars. They all use Bluetooth, um, you know, tech, you know, technology. So they use they, they use Bluetooth to connect. Um, they also can record audio associated with the handwriting, and they use the Neo Studio software um, to, to to save the recording. And you can also share the handwriting uh, via email um, or even even the cloud. So uh, here's a quick. Let me see if I can let's see if we'll jump. Uh, so here's a quick little demo of um, a little tutorial about the. Uh, you can take notes while recording. Tap the more icon on the page menu and tap the start recording button. When the recording starts, the recording signs will be indicated. If you take notes while recording, your writing data will be saved with audio. Press the record bar and press the stop button to complete recording. Now let's replay the voice memo. Tap the more icon at the top of the page and tap the recording icon to see your voice memo. Select a voice memo and press the play button to replay. The part without writings only plays the voice and the part recorded with writings plays with the voice. You can play back the writing time lapse you made with demo. You can replay what was said at the time the note was written. Save and share the writing time lapse as a video file. Create a GIF and share it. You can easily find your notes by tags. There are two ways to add tags. First, let's add tags from the page.
You can also add tags from the main menu. You can easily share your pages. Tap the More icon, then tap the Share icon. Select the file format. You can share with or without the page background. You can share the selected pages through email and social media. So you just get an idea of the um, functionality of that. Hold on one second, is there a chat? Yeah, so the all these technologies require that you use the notebooks provided by the um, you know the developer. Um, the notebooks have um, basically a watermark uh, or very faint dots, so that the camera knows exactly what page you're on. Um, and Neos, the Neos Smart Pen Company also offers a pretty wide variety of different um, different formatted notebooks. Um, you know that students can uh, that students can use. So um, I, I, I want to I want to talk about something that's relatively new. Just came out about two weeks ago. Um, students can actually take audio recordings uh, in Word 365 online and transcribe it. Right now, Microsoft is allowing for 300 months um, for uh, their allowance. But let me see if I can um, do it. Let me see if I have a demo here. So um, this, you need to do this right now on Word Online. So if you have an Office 365 account, you can do this. Uh, right now, it's not built into the desktop um, application, but there, it will at some point. So what you can do is um, go to Word Online, and then you click on the little microphone, and you click Transcribe. And then you have these options of uploading an audio or start recording. And uh, once it once you put your audio file in, it will transcribe. Let me see if I can actually make that happen for you. I'll give you a live demo. Word online watch. So this is using my Office 365 um, account. And I'm just going to open up a, a blank uh, Microsoft Word document. Let me just check my audio file if I have something. I do. OK, great. So Microsoft Word will um, will launch. And once it launches, so now I can go right here and go to transcribe. And I'm going to upload some audio. Um, that I did, that I recorded. So this is a very small file. I did this on my iPhone using the audio um, recorder that's built in. And you can see it's going to uh, start uploading and transcribing. So students could come in with their iPhone or a digital, digital recorder. Um, and then once they're done is upload that file to Word. And it also automatically uh, creates a folder, a transcription folder in your OneDrive. So here's, here's the, the file. Um, I can go in and this could be also works well if students are doing interviews and in classes that they have. It will actually differentiate the speakers and I can actually come in here and I could change th that to, my, to me and change all speakers, make sure it's there. I click here. Notice how it changed it here. I can also listen to it. This is really exciting, the ability to transcribe audio right within Microsoft Word. And you can hear there was background noise in there as well. Let me just see how it chat. Languages, good question. Um, let me let me just check here. Let me I'll get I'll get back to you on on that in a second. Now the other thing too is um, what students can do is um, if they if they want to add that to their Microsoft Word document, I'm just going to make the font a little bit bigger and I click all to document and you can see that 
all of the text from the transcription goes into Microsoft Word. So if they wanted to, they can use the immersive reader um, to read it back uh, to them, which is, um, which is really interesting. So this is, could be another way um, that they could use a digital recorder to record notes and then come back and you know, review it in Microsoft Word. Um, students can also use something like otter.ai, which is uh, using artificial intelligence. They, well, they can use their phone and record notes and it does transcriptions as well. So right now this is 300 minutes a month. I don't know if Microsoft will start charging for the service after that, but um, it's kind of exciting to be able to uh, do this right now, uh, right within Word, which is um, which is really interesting. Any any questions at this point? So um, I'm going to touch upon um, some other some other tools, and uh, uh, I, I guess it was like maybe eight years ago, maybe it's 10 years already, time goes fast. Um, Sinusent is probably one of the leaders in uh, creating software um, that takes advantage of audio. They created Audio Note Taker um, for Mac and Windows, and it's an application that's used a great deal uh, at, the college, uh, at the college level. And this allowed students to basically attach audio to PDFs or um, presentations, um, you know, like PowerPoint. And so you, the students can come in with thumbnails of the PowerPoints and it would allow the students to then attach audio to each of the slides in the PowerPoint um, presentation. Um, some of the feedback they got from students was that it was a great application, but it had a lot of features. And um, so a lot of the students really wanted a um, kind of a, a much lighter version, less features, but something that still relied on audio. And so um, over the last about year, Sonocent has been working on uh, Glean, and which is a very lightweight cloud-based um, storage of their audio notes and runs right within the, the browser. Let me see if I can get that. So this is um, hopefully we get right in. Okay, so this this is um, right in the uh, this is Glean. It works in the browser. Oop. Uh, let's see. Okay, and I actually um, yesterday I was actually demoing this for a student that I worked with. So let me I'll go over a little bit the interface. Um, at the start, um, you can load a PDF or um, a, a slide deck in here. This happens to be a, we were we were brainstorming about how we would use this in his math class. So this is the second page in the PDF. Um, down here you have um, students can tag um, the audio with a heading if it's important, if it's a review or a task. Let's see, chat. Oh, okay, so great. And then you have the familiar record. So let me, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna move I was saying. So let's make believe the um, student was on slide three. I'm posting the slide. And now the student, if, if when this teacher was talking about this, just hit the record button. And you'll see it basically records, the ch it chunks the audio. You can see the playhead moving. If I, if the teacher said, um, this is important information. I can tag it by clicking on it. And I'm just going to say, um, you know, page 45 in workbook. And then I can, when I hit the send button, it sends it, it sends it off into the note area on the right hand side. For students that may not be inclined to type, they can just use the hotkeys and they can tag it by just typing the number key. So for example, if the uh, teacher said that uh, 
there, this is important to review. I can hit the three key and you can see it put the little icon in there. Actually, the icon is backed up about 15 seconds prior to what was being said. When I'm done, I hit the stop. And now if I want to review, I can just come over here and, they can and listen. tag it by just typing the number key. So for example, if the uh, teacher said that uh, there, this is important to review. I can hit the three key and you can see it put the little icon in there. Actually, the icon is backed up. Um, and then once when the student is done with the, um, you know, attending the lecture, you can go to the read view and see whatever notes you um, accumulated. Um, and you could also copy all the notes to the clipboard if the student then wanted to paste it into Word or Google Docs and you could print this out as well, which is nice. Is Glean an app? Yeah, it's actually, it's a web-based app. So the, so the student would just log into their account and it's cloud-based so that all the notes um, can be accessed from anywhere, from any device. There's also an Android and an iOS um, web-based app. Well, it's an app that they can use in the classroom as well. So they don't necessarily need to use their computer um, for that. So that's Glean. I do want to share another new uh, tool. It's called Neo Rico, which is kind of short for recorder. And it's this device here. This is a digital, um, digital recorder and it marries with the iPhone, with, not iPhone, with the Dymo. Uh, pen so the students can actually uh, come in with their notebook digital recorder and record um, record audio let me see I see there's a oop, let me see there's another chat oh yeah unfortunately I'm outside of um, Unfortunately, I'm, I'm working outside of um, Google Slides, so I, I, I apologize um, for that. I thought the uh, Google services are down, so I'm at a disadvantage um, here. Um, so let me So let me let me show you. Um, let's see. So this is Rico. This is relatively new. It's been out maybe two weeks. It's a digital recorder, um, and it works with the Dymo digital pen, um, and then you use the digital notebook, which is the paper notebook, and then it also syncs written written word and um, and audio. So these are the three components that the student would need to come into the classroom with. The pen pairs with the digital recorder and then they write and works pretty much like a live scribe pen in that in that regard. Um, it's got some controls. It's about $128. Um, that's the unboxing. So here's just a, a demo of the Rico. Hi, this is uh, Dr. Friedlander and um, in this video I'd like to show you the Neo Rico and the Neo Dymo pen and how a student could use this technology to record audio notes in the classroom. Um, this solution is unique in that it allows students to write their notes, but then go back and um, listen to what the teacher was saying at the time they actually wrote the notes. So it really is time stamping the handwriting and linking it to the audio note. So this is the <clears throat> Neo Rico. It just came out. It's really small. It has a couple of controls. I'm actually going to do a demo, so I'm going to turn it on. And you can see the uh, power light turned on. Now I'm going to open the Dymo pen and the power button is here. And when it's on, you'll see the light. And also you may have heard some audio. I now paired 
the pen to the Rico recorder. This is fairly lightweight, so a student could bring this into the classroom, uh, and they don't have to have their smartphone on, on to record the, um, the notes. No and one can see your screen. Use, uh, oh, what? This oh. notebook, uh, students. Okay, hold on one sec. Sorry about that. Hi, this is uh, Dr. Friedlander, and um, in this video, I'd like to show you the Neo Rico and the Neo Dymo Pen, and how a student could use this technology to record audio notes in the classroom. Um, this solution is unique in that it allows students to write their notes, but then go back and um, listen to what the teacher was saying at the time they actually wrote the notes. So it really is time stamping the handwriting and linking it to the audio note. So this is the <clears throat> Neo Rico. It just came out. It's really small. It has a couple of controls. I'm actually going to do a demo, so I'm going to turn it on. And you can see the uh, power light turned on. Now I'm going to open the Dymo pen, and the power button is here. And when it's on, you'll see the light. And also, you may have heard some audio. I now paired the pen to the Rico recorder. This is fairly lightweight, so a student could bring this into the classroom, uh, and they don't have to have their smartphone on, on to record the, um, the notes. And I'm going to use this notebook. Uh, students need to need to use the notebooks that are provided by um, the company. This is digital paper. It may be hard to see, but there is a watermark on each page so that um, it makes it easy for the device to um, know exactly where I am on the page. So just imagine I'm in a class and I want to record the notes. Uh, so I will be doing the speaking, but again, this could be a teacher doing a lecture, or this could even be like a YouTube video, or a video that a teacher has put together, uh, especially as students are spending more time in remote learning. So I'm going to hit the record button. You heard that little audio, and you see the red light, and now I am using the Neo Dymo Pen. It's, uh, it's linked uh, to the RICO, and I can basically timestamp my notes with audio. So this is ideal in um, lectures. It can also be used with uh, YouTube or in remote learning. It's not dependent on text so that students can even draw, you know, if they're in a science class, they can draw an image and then the teacher says, that is the nucleus. That is the cell wall. And it allows for nutrients to pass through the wall and exit the wall. When I'm done, I'm just going to press the record button. Now, um, just imagine on the student, uh, you know, I took some notes. I can go back to my classroom or back to my home and tap on any of the text or images that I, re that I wrote and listen to the notes and audio cue up. With uh, YouTube, or in remote, you know, if they're in a science class, they can draw.
draw an image, and then the teacher says, cell wall. And it allows for nutrients to pass through the wall and exit the wall. When I'm done, I'm just going to. So you can see that how handy this uh, solution um, could be. Um, it's very lightweight. Um, the RICO can stay charged for many hours and can be really helpful whether the students in the classroom are doing remote learning. Um, it does have a lot of advantages in that a uh, student doesn't have to have their cell phone out um, to record. And it also allows you know, students, once they're, they want to review their work, it allows them to quickly move through uh, the areas of the notes that they want to review. So I hope you found this um, helpful. Um, and uh, you can find out more information about it online and in my in my slide deck. So just um, as I know we've sort of almost come to the end, but just some things to to consider is what what you know. What is the student hoping to capture with some of these um, these tools? Um, if they're in a, a lecture hall and the teacher predominantly uses PowerPoint slides, they have lots of you know options, especially using something like Glean or Sonnescent Audio Note Taker. Or are they trying to capture things from books? Uh, I didn't I, I didn't get that into that that much uh, today, but certainly there are tools that we can look um, you know to for that and journals. Um, I have worked with a number of students um, using the uh, the C Pen Reader. Uh, these are students that wanted to be able to pull text from a notebook um, or a textbook, and uh, using this this is not only a reading tool, but if I uh, plug a USB cable um, into this. I can actually use this as a personal scanner to scan text. There's also a another model that allow that um, that allows students to do the same thing via Bluetooth um, as as well. Um, so it's you know important not only use the tools but the strategies um, as as well um, when we're working with students with uh, note taking. Um, you know, looking uh, some 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 other tools that just recently um, came out uh, that I've been working with um, is the something you may be familiar with the boogie boards, which were these inexpensive um, tablets for writing, where you press a button and they they erase. They just announced something called carbon um, copy which is a digital pen it doesn't record audio but um, using this pen technology uh, students could use this in lieu of paper and uh, this connects via bluetooth to an android or iphone and everything you write on the boogie board gets transferred um, to the app um, where you can then search it and, and organize it. So if students are looking to move away from paper and uh, something that's uh, kind of interesting to use, uh, this is uh, interesting, uses a actually digital smart pen and that pen is actually made by the same company as Neo Smart Pen. So that's, that's really interesting. And then I've also, looking at the future, there's a lot of standalone um, devices um, such as the Mobi Scribe, um, another one called Paper, that are basically dedicated um, e-ink devices uh, for taking notes. So I think you know, moving to the future, a lot of students might be moving to um, something, something like this, um, which is uh, basically uses e-ink um, very and it's lightweight and uh, these devices can run for um, probably you know five times the number of hours that an iPad can. These use uh, e-ink technology and have some really interesting collaborative um, software as well. So that's um, actually we'll be uh, testing uh, paper and then you have things like um, oops, I gotta remember to stay in there. 
Uh, and then you have uh, devices like the uh, Mobi Scribe, also um, e-ink technologies. Um, this is actually a pretty affordable, this runs about $179 um, available on Amazon. And again, it's, um, it's a reader, uh, let, let students annotate PDFs and, and also a, a tool uh, for note taking. So these tools are um, starting to really uh, come in in force, let's see. And uh, so it's kind of interesting to see you know, how these various e-ink technologies, um, um, you know, are going to be used for note-taking in the future. We just have a, a couple of, um, a couple of minutes, and I'll be glad to answer any questions that you might, you might have. I'll also, um, I will, you'll get a link with my presentation in the doc. So um, Lyle is saying it's hard to justify funding e-ink for students when they have um, such limited functionality relative to a proper tablet or a Chromebook. You know, I, I, you know, I, th I think there's, there's a sweet spot for these technologies. Um, you know, in, in terms of what you want to do, what people, you know, what you want to do. Some people find using an iPad or so those technologies is very distracting. So maybe students in high school or college, um, they you know may want to take a look um, at it. And uh, if you work with students, you know uh, you ask them to sh to show you their device. Most likely, it's got maybe five percent charge. The, some of these devices can stay charged for up to a week, um, so they may be you know easier in certain ways um, that you know that students can take advantage of it. So like everything else, you have to look at what the student needs to do, the features and the tasks at hand, and if it makes sense. To your point, if I may, yes. my son, for example, I could see, could use these tools. Mm -hmm. He just started a therapeutic high school and he doesn't know how to take notes. And I think these tools might be quite beneficial. We are just starting the therapeutic school journey. Are okay. these tools gonna to be provided to my son who is disabled, however, he's autistic, However, he's got 132 uh, IQ, so he's fully functional. It's a, it's a person that we need to, to, to hone their skills and be able to use these tools. So right. what's your recommendation? Um, I mean, I would say, you know, I would go back to your district and say, um, you know, you, you've learned about some of these tools. You think some of these could benefit and have um, an assistive technology consultant come in and do an evaluation and see what makes the most sense um, for your interestingly your enough that's perfect but that was already done prior to him being um, given therapeutic school right. uh, you know pathways and now we're in the 30 day where after 30 days it'll be a new IEP so those evaluations were already done are you recommend recommending that I have it redone in a therapeutic school sense because they came up with nothing you know, they really were not looking for the right things, in my opinion. Right. And so well, I, you know, wondering from I mean, your, you can always go back and re I don't know when the last one was done, but certainly request another one or, you know, I mean, you could provide them with my slide deck and say, here's some interesting tools. Um, that, that's you know. what I'm thinking. So I'm just right. wondering, are these already already available out there or are these something I have to bring to the table? So, so I, I, no, I mean, they're, I mean, all these are commercially available um, and are being used in the marketplace. So, uh, yeah, I mean, some of these are relatively new. I mean, the Rico just came out three weeks ago. Um, I do a lot of beta testing. The companies reach out to me. And so I'm always testing new um, innovative uh, technologies. Um, so, I mean. And are you looking for any um, families to join that research effort to move knowledge forward? Because we, I'm also, you know, far, doing stuff like that. So I'm glad to, to help. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, you know, I don't work for these companies. They usually reach out to me and ask me to kind of kick the tires of some of the new, um, but, you know, reach, you know, reach out to me. Um, uh, I'll, you know, my email will be in the slide deck and uh, see how maybe we could possibly work together. I should say too that in, in, in my other slide deck that um, I have, uh, you know, things even like the rocket book, which are more, I'll say paper-based, um, but add the digital component can be used um, quite effectively as well. If you've never seen them, they're basically look like, uh, you know, paper notebooks, but they use a Tyvek paper and they use the friction, the pilot friction pens. What's unique is that at the bottom of the page, um, they have icons and you can set up the, uh, set those up so that um, the information that you write can be scanned using um, the app uh, so that they can be stored, whether it be OneDrive, Google Drive. So again, another way 
to kind of move um, students, you know, away from paper. I've also used the Wacom Bamboo Tablet, which is a paper-based uh, tool that can also store information uh, in the cloud. So there's a lot of really interesting consumer-based technologies that can be used for note-taking. I know my time is running out, but um, thanks for uh, hanging in with me uh, despite some of the technical um, Hello. issues. And uh, have a great have a great rest of the day. Hi, I'm good. How are you? And, uh, Wait, so I can't I can hardly hear you or understand you. Tell me you, you, you Okay. So I will provide um, Naomi with uh, the uh, a bitly address to my slide deck that you can gain access to. I'll actually, I'll put it in, once Google's up and running, I'll put it into the doc uh, for the today's workshop, okay? And uh, if you have any questions, you can reach out uh, to me. But thanks again for spending some time with me. And if you have questions, feel free to follow up with me. Have a great day at the conference.